Avery, which is she's the director of HR at Baker's Waste Equipment, also known as BWE for us that live close by. And we're going to have her talk a little bit about the um, the uh, company and also some of the needs, some products that they make. So I'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit more thoroughly if she wants to and start our presentation. Thanks so much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Mabry, and I am the Director of Human Resources. Um, as was stated, I've been with BWE for approximately about two and a half years. Um, the company has had steady growth. Um, even throughout the pandemic, we were one of the fortunate companies that were able to stay fully employed. Very proud of that and, you know, thankful for our customer base as well that allowed us to, to do that. Um, our company, a little bit about who we are and what we do, um, Baker's Waste Equipment has been in business since 1981. And what we do is we manufacture waste container units. So a lot of people don't really understand what that is. So if you drive up to any restaurant and you see the big metal trash can at their facility, um, those are called front load units and then we manufacture those. And then if you would ride to a construction site where someone's building a new house or a new building, uh, you see the long rectangle units out there that people put the, the, the waste in. And those are called our roll off units. And then if you were to ever ride behind a mall uh, and you or a big shopping complex and you see the enclosed units that like compact cardboard or compact trash we manufacture those and those are called our compactors so those are our product lines our main product lines we have a few others but we manufacture industrial metal waste container units um, so having said that's what we do what kind of positions that we have available um, the metal that we weld, we use MIG welding. So we usually could always use MIG welder candidates. Um, we have a lot of fabrication equipment. So we need uh, people to repair, maintain, and install that new equipment. So industrial maintenance technicians, in addition to MIG welders, is a position that we often need. Um, also, our units, they, if you've ever rode by our yard in Lenore, yeah, people say it looks like the rainbow out in our yard. There's all different colors of units out there. And so we do finish what we call finish, which is painting uh, our own units. So industrial painters. Now, an industrial painter, it uses the spray methodology and they have to have familiarity with uh, wearing and working with a respirator so that they can stay safe while they are painting. So those are some of our key positions. We currently are enrolled with Apprenticeship North Carolina program that runs with the community colleges for the industrial maintenance technician position and the welder position. So if you are in those programs and you're looking for a place of employment that goes along with the apprenticeship for your program, we are in those programs as well. That's a little bit about what we are and what we do. Um, just a little bit about how the culture of our company is. So we have some core values that we've established as a company. Um, just things that are identified in every policy procedure and just every action that we do. Um, because the industry that we work in it has the potential to be so dangerous. Uh, our first and number one top core value as a company is safety. We focus on that. We live that daily. You'll never come in here every single day starts with safety talk. Um, so you'll never come in a day and safety not be the first thing that you face in the morning. After that, our second core value is quality. Um, just as with any other line of business, we have competitors. Um, sometimes we are the low price leader and sometimes we are not. And the times when we're not the low price leader, our quality of product is really, really what makes us stand out. Um, so we're proud to have our customer base who really appreciates the quality of our products. Um, after quality is customer service. Um, in our customer service bubble, we don't just believe that that is um, having good customer service to our customers. We believe in our community. So how do we service our community? Um, how do we present ourselves? How involved are we in our community? And we do try to stay uh, involved in the community, whether it be for, through volunteer projects, um, working with some of the, the, the local organizations who seek things from us. Sometimes we'll work with Caldwell House, uh, Bethel Colony. We've done some, offered some uh, volunteer work to uh, Caldwell EDC. 
So community is very much part of our customer service. And then after that um, is productivity. You know, we are a manufacturer. Um, when you are in manufacturing, you have to have that level of quota per se or level of product that can be delivered. So we do have uh, productivity as a standard um, and we have time studies and things done like that to go with that. And then the employees are fully aware of what the expected productivity is. So it's not something that runs behind the scenes. You're aware of what you're, what's expected and then what your productivity is. You'll know that each week. And so um, if anybody has any questions, I would be glad to answer them. All right, folks, so feel free to ask questions by using the uh, chat box. Or if you want to turn on your microphone, you may do so. Uh, if we have a lot of questions, there's a little raise your hand uh, feature, which I will do it right now so you can see it on the middle of your screen. On the bottom, you'll see that. All right, I have uh, Gary Hudson, who's actually our welding instructor slash uh, director of the program. Uh, he's asking, how many welders do you need? Do you mean immediately? Yes. So um, we have 20 welder positions available. Um, they are going to be hired in increments. We do a pretty um, detailed orientation. Um, so usually an employee is in what we call the training period for the first two weeks. And the most people that I can put through a training period one time is six people. So um, not everybody can start at one time, but certainly we could get them cycled through within the first, you know, a couple of months. But we do need 20 welders. Um, and then we need uh, two maintenance technicians and four industrial painters at the moment. I right, thank you for that answer. Uh, Gary, did you get the answer that you needed? And while we're waiting for his answer, uh, anybody else have any other questions? Let's see, I might have some other, okay. All right, so if you have any other questions, uh, we can also share uh, Victoria's contact with you. Uh, any other questions? I know a few folks are in here today. I, I do know, know that, from uh, the college before, we have had people be in welding school and want to inquire about a job here. So Gary actually, um, from my understanding, is the facilitator or the teacher in the welding program. So I will say this, we are a first shift only facility. So students that are in day classes would not be a fit because they would not be able to fit into our schedule as a welder but any night school students that are in the welding program we have worked with Gary before and you can do the actual welding job and still make it to your night classes we'll get you out of here in enough time to get to your nighttime classes so if somebody's wondering oh I'm in school for this now could I potentially get a job now the answer is yes if you're in the night school program for welding at Caldwell Community College okay thank you for that answer uh, Stephen Starnes uh, is asking, can we get a job description for the maintenance positions? Um, I would be happy to do that. I ask anybody who's wanting a detailed uh, information about the positions um, to please email me. The, my best method of contact is my email. However, you can text me as well. Um, so feel free to just shoot a text to 828-228-6659. Again, that's 828 828- 228-6659 and you can just give me your name and your request and if you want to put your email address in there I can email it to you and if I can't email it to you I'll try to send it via text as a file. Uh, if you want some um, to email me about some information my email is vmabry at bwe-nc.com and I think uh, J Jimmy has put that up in the chat there, what my email address is. So those are the best ways to contact uh, just on the surface of what an industrial uh, maintenance technician will do. We have uh, CNC equipment and we still have some manual equipment. So the ideal maintenance candidate would have experience with hydraulics uh, repair, pneumatics, um, and also have experience with electrical so a lot of times we'll have to wire our equipment so wiring in new machinery and taking down old machinery um, so you'd have to undo the wiring or put the wiring in um, so that's just on the surface of what some of the responsibilities of a, a maintenance tech would need all right we have a question from rodney uh, rodney if you would like to uh, enable your microphone thanks so much uh, yes miss Mabry. thank you uh, my name is rodney woody i am the uh, Veterans Career Advisor for Caldwell County. I work with NC Works, and uh, what I do is I help veterans get job ready. And uh, my, my question is, uh, th these 20 positions, is this like a one-time thing, or do you have 
these type positions that come open frequently or ever so often? We have experienced steady growth <clears throat> over the past two and a half years that I've been here and uh, even the year preceding me being here. So right now we have a planned level of growth, which opens up the 20 positions, but typically we will have uh, one to five positions always open. Okay, uh, fantastic. Uh, I've, I've left my email address and I'm certainly gonna write yours down as well. Uh, and you know, perhaps, you know, because I don't have any welders right now that I'm working with, but uh, that's not to say what one won't come in tomorrow. So, you know, perhaps, okay. Uh, okay. you know, maybe a good fit that you and I could maybe work together and uh, collaborate and, and uh, you, you know, maybe help somebody else that's got the, and you said that's MIG welding, right? Yes, MIG welding. So there's quite a few different types of welding. Um, there's ARC, there's TIG, there's MIG, there's a couple other ones. MIG is the practice that we use most frequently here. Rarely, rarely, rarely is there any TIG welding done here. And we do have a few individuals who can do that. So if they've TIG welded before, that's great to know that they have that skill set, but they must have a MIG welding skill set. Thank you so much. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woody. Uh, we have another question from Gary Hudson about, uh, could you describe a little bit about the training that they receive at BWE before they start welding? Yes, so we have um, our own, it's a welding school. What it's meant to do is give you the basics of what we do. So it's healthy to have some type of welding skill set when you come into there. We weld on what people would call high heat. So you're probably not going to face that kind of heat uh, in, in any other kind of training or any other job that you've had. So really the main thing is that they come in the first day of orientation. Um, they spend about four hours here at the facility and it is nothing but safety training and filling out new hire paperwork. Their second day would actually be an eight hour day. And so what that is, is they would come in, they would get about two more hours of safety training. They get about three hours of math competency training, just giving everybody a refresher on measuring angles, measuring in inches, measuring metric, um, how to do some, you know, basic math companies such as, you know, dividing, multiplying, um, addition, subtraction, uh, working with fractions because fractions is something that you use in measurement. So there is some competency training there. And then after that, uh, they will go out onto our physical training sales where we have cranes set up the same type of cranes that would be you would be using in your work area so that you learn how to work with the crane. Um, it, you get scrap metal, our own scrap metal that you weld on. So you're messing with or welding with the type of gauge of metal that we work with and on the heat. And they will ramp you up to the heat, but you have to be able to produce a weld with it the heat that we use. Um, so you work on that. Someone with hardly any welding skill set, um, just some basic knowledge may be in that welding cell for two weeks. Somebody who's welded before and welded for many years might be in the training cell practicing the actual weld for three days. It's really just on how quick the individual acclimates to what we actually do here. Great. Uh, just a quick reminder, I'm not trying to stop you from uh, answering questions. Just a reminder for you to sign in uh, with the sign-in sheet that I just posted on the chat box. Uh, that helps us keep uh, uh, a tab of uh, participants and help us uh, justify continuing our, our series. So thanks so much for filling that out for us. Uh, let's see, any other questions from anybody, any other participants that are here? And so far, I, I've been enjoying the answers and the questions. Uh, so far, they're very enlightening. So I hope it's going to help us uh, help our customers or ourselves if, if you happen to be somebody who's looking for a job specifically. Any other questions? You may do it. Oh, let's see here. Okay. Any other questions through chat or you can speak on the microphone? Give it a few seconds. While I'm waiting for more questions, I have a question for you. I know that uh, one of our instructors is, is probably watching right now in a classroom with some uh, English as a second language learners. Uh, if somebody is uh, improving their English skills right now and they want to find a job because they happen to have experience or would be a good fit for your company, um, how do you work with individuals that have that sort of background? Good question. Um, our population is actually 30 8% Hispanic. 
Um, and so they are Spanish speakers. That's their first language is Spanish um, and English is their second language. Our trainer um, is bi fully bilingual. So the trainer that they would come in and be trained by, uh, Spanish is actually his first language and English is his second language, but he speaks both languages fluently. So they would have that ability to kind of work with them. And then um, we do have some supervisors here. Our production manager is fully bilingual in English and Spanish. And then we have another supervisor who is also here and will assist as needed that is fully um, bilingual in English and Spanish and most of if not all of our leads are bilingual in English and Spanish as well so there is there is that capability for that person to work out well within our company great thanks so much for that for that answer we have another question here from Melissa Darling asking about uh, average salary um, average salary is really depending upon experience I will tell you that um, our welders, uh, depending if you have absolutely no experience to having many years of experience. So there's a big wage range in there somewhere in the $13 to $17 an hour marker is where our welders are going to start at. Um, industrial maintenance technicians, again, it's dependent upon experience. Um, and again, they are usually... Um, a maintenance helper, which is somebody who's just coming out as an apprentice, that's again going to be somewhere likely in the $14 an hour range, uh, up to $21 an hour, depending on the experience uh, that they may have. They may come with 15 years of experience, so it's just a big wage range. And uh, usually our industrial painters, again, depending upon experience, the starting uh, starting out there is usually going to be somewhere in the um, $14 to $17 hour range for the industrial painters as well. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't plug our programs. Uh, we have programs that complement well what uh, Baker's Waste Equipment is looking for. So if you have any questions about our programs, please contact one of us and I'll put my email in the chat box. Uh, anyone have any other questions? So far we had great questions. And I'm going to give you a moment. And while I'm waiting for questions, I'm going to post here our survey, which we would appreciate you giving us feedback about today's presentation and things that you would like to see more of in future presentations. Any other questions? Victoria, do you have any other questions or anything you would like to add? I don't have any other questions, but I'd like to thank everyone who attended this session and anyone who's going to watch this uh, video in the future. And we are exciting to have new team, team members at BWE always. So looking forward to, to people coming and applying to be an employee here. Great. Thank you so much for your willingness to come and present to us. Uh, this has been great. Uh, a lot of folks drive by a lot of these companies and they have no clue what happens inside. What are the products and who are they looking for? And so it's great to have you and clarify about what you do and uh, what you need. And hopefully we'll be able to supply some good workers for you. And of course, we're doing that with training. And uh, let us know if you need anything. I put my email in the chat just in case anybody wants to contact the college about any particular programs that might help them uh, get to the next level and employed. Thanks so much.